joined by the Hall of Fame college football coach Tom Osborne, former Nebraska coach, national championship coach, and he joins us on 365 Sports. That program has meant so much to you and to so many others, and it just hasn't been the same for quite some time. I know you haven't met Matt Rule, but what have you known or hear about him that might be the right fit in Lincoln? Grant Taft there at uh, Baylor, and he was very high on uh, Matt as a person and and uh, as a coach. Grant's opinion certainly uh, means a lot to me, and um, and of course there have been people here in Nebraska who have interacted with Matt uh, over the last several weeks, and they've been very impressed too. Uh, we did have a short telephone conversation and you know <laughs> a, a telephone conversation is it's hard to de- determine a lot but uh, he certainly seems like a very very good person i think he's a, a man of faith and uh, that appeals to me certainly i and he's rebuilt and there's some rebuilding obviously that needs to occur here and so um, he looks like a person with energy i i think he's uh good communicator i've seen him on some tv uh, interviews and so uh, certainly all all the signs uh, i guess point in the right direction and i certainly wish him the very best what did you ask coach taff when you spoke with him about matt Rowe? what he thought of him grant has stayed pretty close to the baylor program and so i felt that as a, a football uh, judgment that um, Grant would probably be about as anybody uh, as anybody I could talk to regarding the job that Matt did there, and he said that uh, everyone at Baylor had been quite impressed with Matt and pleased with the job he had done, and uh, so uh, you know that was uh, that was one opinion, but that was one that value that certainly was of value to me. Now. Having said all that, let me be very clear that uh, I really had nothing to do with Matt's being hired. That's our athletic director, Trev Alberts, and uh, you know Trev was on the phone, on video conferences, on personal contact with uh, a, a good many people, and uh, it was his judgment that Matt was the right person, and uh, I guess of Matt would certainly corroborate that. So, uh, but, but I don't want to give the opinion to anybody that somehow my uh, my opinion, my influence was the reason that Matt is uh, coming to work here. Coach, what has happened and why is Nebraska kind of in this wilderness? The continuity, of course, with Coach Devaney and you and then Coach Solich and then from that point on, it just seems like it's been lost. Just from your perspective, what do you think is missing or what has been missing? Bill Callahan was here with a little bit over uh, 500, uh, did some good things, came out of the NFL, and uh, there were certain things about Nebraska, walk on program, college programs that I think we're not familiar to Bill that would maybe have helped him. Uh, Bo Pelini followed, and Bo uh, won nine or ten games every year, at least on the field. You couldn't say that Bo was an abject failure. He uh, went to bowl game every year and, and did quite well as far as the football part. Sometimes his interpersonal relations with the press was not the best, but uh, he did a lot of good things. And then we had Mike Riley, very nice guy, and had coached a lot of places. And uh, I think over three years or so, he went 500, and uh, he was released. And then Scott Frost, who played for me and and was coach of the year by most everybody uh, about five years ago when he took UCF to an undefeated uh, season, I think the only undefeated season maybe, among major colleges and uh, appear to be a cinch and for whatever reason uh, things just didn't seem to fall together for Scott. I certainly wish him well. Had an interim coach Mickey Joseph who did the very best he could this season and and I hope very much that he'll stay on the the staff because he worked really hard, said the right things, did the right things and uh, and so We'll have to see where it goes, and uh, but it has been a, 
uh, you know, we had quite a few years, about 40 years of great stability. You know, Bob, I was an assistant for Bob for uh, his 11 years. And then Frank Solich was an assistant to me mm -hmm. for around 19 of the 25 years. And uh, so there was a common way of doing things, approaching players, uh, mindset toward the game of football, things that were important. And so there was a common thread there for about 42 years. And then uh, um, somehow we lost that. And uh, hopefully we can get it back. Back when Coach Devaney and you, and when I was growing up in Nebraska, you mentioned the continuity. But you had advantages, and you were ahead of the curve in so many things, from strength and conditioning to even the academic setup came into Texas when you needed to and got all Americans out of various parts of Texas. Nebraska seemed to be ahead of the curve with maybe a handful of others. Then that seems to have been lost. Can Nebraska get back to recruiting players with the setup the way it is today, get to Lincoln and players that can help them win? As as you know, the, uh, the landscape has changed dramatically now with the transfer portal. And I think in, in some instances that enables people to to gain ground really rapidly, whereas at one time, if if you were down uh, and you almost had to start from scratch, it would take three or four years to get those players uh, uh, mature enough as football players and physically developed enough to, to be competitive. And uh, now uh, there's the threat of losing players to the transfer portal and there's also the possibility of gaining some really talented players and that whole thing has kind of stood college football on its ears um, uh, this is a place that does have uh, a few assets um, we have a great fan base we've had something like uh, I don't know 300 and some consecutive sellout games and even through the last four or five years of losing we've we've been sold out every every game which is uh, almost un unbelievable and uh, so that's been good I think the uh, facilities here are good and uh, there are uh, I think the, the thing about it now when you're going out to recruit a 17 18 year old young guy uh, he obviously has no memory of any time when Nebraska was uh, was exceptionally good, and so that that's a, a problem. And we don't have a, a large population base, but um, there's enough here that I think that yeah, it is certainly possible to be very good again. But it takes a lot of we do pretty much recruit nationally, and we have to keep the uh, better players in Nebraska here. There aren't huge numbers of them, but uh, and, and the walk-on program, I think, still is a possibility. Now, there were some coaches that didn't understand that, but we had a lot of kids in Nebraska that were very, very um, willing to, to walk on, and in many ways, they set the culture, because they were almost by definition overachievers, guys who would work very hard and usually people who had a great work ethic and also great character. And uh, I think that sort of permeated the, the squad and, and made a big difference. And, uh, and in, in some ways that had been lost. I think it is, it is possible to recapture that. It is true that the, uh, we probably stayed ahead of the curve on uh, strength and conditioning for a period of time. And uh, we did graduate our players and that's, uh, still, I think, rings true and is an advantage for uh, for us. But uh, um, overall, the, the landscape has shifted in many ways. And it's, it's just a more difficult 
the philosophy of Matt Rule seems to be what was the core foundation of what you coached and others and what Nebraska was known for, to win on the offense and defensive lines, to be if you play against a team when he was at Temple or Baylor, that you would know you had been in the game, even if early on he wasn't winning as many games until he kind of got his program set up. Do those three things, when you hear that, offense, defensive lines, and solid special teams, does that ring a bell? Does that make you and maybe Nebraska fans go, wow, we've been waiting for that? Well, those, those are obviously uh, three three key areas. Uh, yeah, I think what happens up front uh, is the determining factor in probably 80 percent of football games and uh, we we did historically have offensive lines that were very good every year good defenses and good kicking games and you can't ignore any one of those three areas of, uh, of a football game and, and, uh, and so I'm, I'm glad to hear uh, that you feel that he's been very adept at all three and and but certainly that was something at one time that was uh, stressed here. And uh, I'm not saying that coaches later on here did not work at it or stress it. But uh, probably the offensive line area is uh, the one area that we really, truly excelled at. And some of that had to do with the walk-ons. It had to do with the way we practiced because our uh, second unit got as many snaps as our first unit and uh, we really uh, were able to develop talent that way. Coach, last question. How hungry are Nebraska football fans to win again? Well, I think there there are probably very few places where you could come as a coach and uh, and have as much ongoing support despite uh, four or five losing seasons as you would have at Nebraska. There's great enthusiasm for football, for whatever for whatever reason, uh, Nebraska fans have, have still remained very loyal. And as I mentioned, the attendance has been tremendous under the circumstances. And and they have uh, got a new facility going up right now, which will be attractive. And so uh, somebody want, comes in here and wants to work hard and uh, really emphasize the basics. I think eventually we'll be successful. Coach, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I told you this before. I really appreciate your time. I hope you're doing great, and thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thank you for calling. Hall of Fame head football coach Tom Osborne on 365 Sports. There's Tom Osborne, and he made the comment. He called.